investors are slowly waking up to biggest currency and sovereign debt crisis in world history. Things will get ugly fast. Hi, I've got Alan Hibbard with me once again. There is some strange stuff that has happened in the gold market, and I uh, tweeted out that, there, that this is happening. However, uh, we need to investigate further, so we're going to catch up on that Monday. For right now, we're going to visit some comments and tweets from other uh, market analysts, and I wanted to just discuss these things with Alan. So, Alan, how are you doing? I'm great, Mike. Thanks. Excited to get into this. Excellent. So first up, we've got Peter Schiff's comments, gold up $20, oil up 80 cents, long-term treasury yields hitting new highs, which means the bond prices are hitting new lows, existing bonds like the 30-year treasury. Uh, what's also significant is that the dollar is also selling off. Investors are slowly waking up to big, uh, curr biggest currency and sovereign debt crisis in world history. Things are things will get ugly uh, fast. And, you know, we are in this debt super cycle that started with the creation of the Federal Reserve. So we've got this super cycle has more than 100 years of pent up energy in it. And then, uh, you know, when it comes to sovereign debt, we hit a low back in probably the uh, early late 70s, early 80s of 30 percent of GDP. Uh, so uh, what, do you, what do you have to say about uh, gold going up, the dollar going down, uh, oil uh, up 80 cents a barrel, and treasuries hitting their lows? And the fact that, you know, I, I, I've been talking about a currency crisis for years, because when you're talking about a 100-year a super cycle, uh, trying to nail the exact moment of crisis within a, a, a month or a year is impossible, but you can see that it's coming. Yeah, exactly, Mike. I mean, I remember when I first joined this space and started learning from you 10 years ago and reading your first book, you mentioned back in the 70s, um, economists that actually thought critically could smell a currency crisis coming. And that has only worsened and worsened and worsened for 40, 50, 60 years. And we're watching the biggest currency crisis in history and the biggest sovereign debt crisis in history play out at the same time in slow motion. So it's kind of unbelievable to live through this. You know, in uh, the book that I, you know, that we just wrote, you were assisting me with all of the data and so on. Um, the, I, I do mention that, uh, you know, we have spent all of our capital that we, uh, before World War II, we were at very low levels of debt to GDP, and then it went up to 105% of GDP. And here we are up at like close to 120 or around 120. Uh, and so there is no capital. And then I just saw a video of the president saying that we're America, we're the richest country on earth, and, and, uh, and we can afford to, <laughs> to fund two wars simultaneously. Uh, uh, you know, talking about Israel and so on, um, and the recklessness that our politicians, they, they, they think that this is their birthright to just spend our way into oblivion. I find it pretty scary. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, the United States used to be the richest nation. We used to be the biggest creditor nation. Now we're the biggest debtor nation. We owe a lot of money. We don't have the money. We're just printing it and borrowing it. So Currency. Yeah, currency. Excuse me. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So let's move on to the next one here. Uh, uh, Marin Katusa of Katusa Research says gold is silently breaking out all around the world, making all new record highs in Australian dollars, Chinese yuan, Canadian dollars, British pounds. Uh, all eyes are on the benchmark U.S. dollar gold price all time high of 2074. He's got a couple of charts in here. And if I enlarge those, so Australian dollars and Chinese yuan. Now, you know, I just commented, you can see that there's an intraday candle here where the high was higher. But um, I had just commented on how uh, with when you include the spread on the 
uh, Shanghai Exchange, that it's up even further than this because uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the Chinese were paying a 6% premium uh, uh, for delivery of gold off of the Shanghai Exchange over the international spot price. And um, uh, now it's down to about 3%, I believe. But still, when you couple that with this latest candle, it's, it's setting even this intraday high that we have uh, back in 2020 in Chinese renminbi, uh, uh, that we've, we've way surpassed that. And when gold gets into the news cycle as setting record highs, that's when you can experience a runaway and it'll start rising in all currencies. Because once Chinese investors that are experiencing an implosion in real estate start uh, seeing that uh, gold is exp the, the safe haven when now they're seeing that real estate is no longer, a, when, when real estate is blown into a bubble, it is not a safe haven. <laughs> they're now experiencing this. What could happen when the world's largest uh, population by country uh, sees that, that their safety, their redemption lies not in real estate, where most of their economy is invested. It's a, it's a heavy, real estate is, a, is the largest percent driver of GDP in uh, China. And, um, and, and here, gold, the safe haven from an imploding real estate market uh, is setting record highs and gets into the news cycle. What do, you, what do you think about all of that? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you completely. And the fact that gold is making a record high in different currencies around the world just shows you that it doesn't really matter what currency you have. It's a temporary solution to a long term problem. If you want to store your purchasing power over time, you need gold. Like there, there's no two ways about it. And the whole world has been fueled by credit and fiat fiat money or fiat currency is, of course, credit. And I think it was JP Morgan who said gold is money. Everything else is credit. And we're just seeing how credit is not going to be a long term solution to a long term problem. And to paraphrase Ray Dalio, uh, he who does not own gold knows neither uh, economics or history, neither economics nor history. Uh, and so Ray Dalio, you know, one of the most successful investors there is, is saying, if, if you don't own gold, you don't know anything and you better own gold. So your comment about all currencies, uh, this, you know, my friend uh, Tavi Costa, Hi, I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for subscribing and mention that if you'd like to help our channel, please consider my company, GoldSilver.com, the next time you buy precious metals. We're one of the most trusted names in the industry. Our prices are sharp, delivery is fast, and we have an insider's program where you find out exactly what I'm doing with my own investments. Thanks for making GoldSilver.com your dealer. And now, back to the video of Crescat Capital dot net uh, is, you know, put up this chart with uh, gold in six major currencies here. So these and when you look at the minor currencies, those have been setting record highs for a long time. So now it isn't it, it's the major currencies joining the party. The major currencies, they tend not to abuse their currency supply quite so much as the smaller sort of banana republic uh, countries. I, uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that <laughs> banana republic comment. But uh, this is really important because we've got the euro, the British pound, the Chinese yuan, the Aussie dollar, J Japanese yen, and Korean won. And look at the Japanese yen <laughs> measured in gold. Yeah, exactly. And so, again, what I was just saying, if you look at all these currencies, compared to gold, imagine flipping these charts upside down. So of course, we're looking at the price of gold here and it's going up and to the right. That's a great sign for right. gold. But if you flip it upside down and you see everything dropping off a cliff, what are you measuring? You're measuring the currencies themselves. They're, yeah. they're, dro they're dropping to zero off a cliff. They're going to zero so fast. Do you wanna hold these currencies? I don't think so. It's a bad investment. Right. Yeah, that this is why I contend that, uh, that None of these are money. Money must be a store of value. Flip this graph upside down and you see exactly 
what they're doing. And, you know, we were writing that chapter for the book that didn't make it into the book because it just became so big. It put so much space and information between the beginning of the book and the point of the book that I just thought it was diluting the message. But it was a chapter on something I've called wealth cycles. I made that term. I created that term uh, back in, I don't know, 2011 or something like that. And um, uh, you said to me at one point, you do realize that every graph is a rate because we were making ratio charts and I was having you make hundreds <laughs> of ratio charts. And you go, you do realize that every chart is a ratio chart. It's a ratio of the thing you're measuring and the value of the dollar. <laughs> I went, yeah. whoa, <laughs> that explains the whole thing right there. <laughs> yeah. So what's your comment on, uh, uh, you have any more comments on, on this great series of charts that Tavi came up with? Um, yeah, ba basically just, you know, every single person on the planet, we, we have a native currency and we basically use that to measure things, the price of, you know, milk yeah. or gasoline or real estate. And we assume that that is a reliable and stable unit of measure, but it's not. And you can see that it's a terrible unit of measure. It's like using a rubber ruler to build a house. And every day, the number, the, the definition of an inch changes you can't build a house that way. And people are building their financial houses measured in a, a currency that's changing value. And we're building society itself on something that's that's changing over time. There is no foundation. It's going to come tumbling down. It's only a matter of time. Yes, which uh, reminds me of the Ludwig von, My von Mises quote uh, that a boom brought on by credit. Um, I can't remember the exact quote at this moment. <laughs> But uh, a boom brought on by credit has to basically come to an end because of all of the misallocations that are made. And the choice is whether or not to abandon the boom early and suffer the pain or wait until it, and it, it results in a total catastrophe of the currency system involved, which is what has happened. We've slapped a Band-Aid on. We did not let markets correct back in 2008. We came up with Bernankonomics. And uh, the Bernankonomics have uh, uh, just uh, destroyed the free market system and price discovery and allowed bubbles to uh, happen that are beyond the scale of anything we've ever experienced. And um, so anyway, um, uh, this is, flipping these upside down shows you what the, the dollar the euro, the yen, the British pound, because all of these are the dollar, uh, then uh, adjusted by the exchange rate for the euro, the pound, the yuan, uh, Aussie dollars, Japanese yen, and Korean won. They adjust it for this exchange rate, and then they divide it by the price of gold. And, uh, or by, and then, yeah, they're taking the price of gold in dollars and then adjusting it to the currency. And uh, so... Uh, this includes the, the dollar. Just flip any chart upside down. And since the beginning of this century, uh, gold is more than storing value. It's gaining in value. And uh, all of the currencies over the long haul have lost a tremendous amount. Uh, well, from it's 250 to basically 2,000. So how many times is that? That's eight, eight times. Eight, eight times, times the value. Yeah. So it's it's... Yeah, so it's lost roughly 80%. The dollar has lost 80% of its purchasing power to gold. Uh, yeah, seven eighths, 88%, basically. Yeah. Eight? Wow. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you're so good with math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to wrap this one up. Uh, this is a dangerous time in history. And as a gold dealer, I get to see the amount of uh, supply and demand for gold. And right now, uh, it isn't the public that is buying. Maybe it's the public in other parts of the world. But uh, right now, you know, sales are slow. And so I know that people aren't protecting themselves in the period of time that is the most dangerous and at the same time offers you the greatest opportunity of true financial gains. If gold does this breakout in all world currencies, you can look for some fireworks. And then on top of that, 
uh, silver gives you leverage to gold and the silver uh, supply and demand and the, the how suppressed the price is. Uh, gold should do a slingshot move, but silver uh, will probably lay in wait for a little while, but then magnify whatever gold's gains are by, uh, you know, uh, one and a half, two times, maybe three times, possibly more. Who knows? Uh, any comments on that before we leave? Uh, no, I completely agree with you. I just hope that everyone uh, takes the position that they think is going to make them safest uh, before it's too late. Right. Right. Okay. Thanks. And thank the audience for listening. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Mike. Hi, I just wanted to tell you about Gold Silver's 111 ounce silver giveaway where you can win, 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 one, one, one. One one ounce silver bar, one 10 ounce silver bar, and one 100 ounce silver bar. So enter today and win.